I've been a dermatologist for 36 years, and for the last 15 years or so, have been extremely interested in treating patients who have hyperhidrosis. The reason that I spend so much time and effort treating these patients is because dermatologists can improve the quality of life of patients with hyperhidrosis more than they can improve quality of life of patients with any other problem, including the worst psoriasis, eczema, acne, and even skin cancers. Patients who have hyperhidrosis are not medically sick. Nobody dies of hyperhidrosis, but many die a slow death, if you will, of the psychological trauma that, it, that that incurs. I was really afraid to have relationships with people. I uh, can't use the touch phones uh, that are the latest technology uh, because that won't read my hands. I, you know, interact with a lot of customers and I, you know, tend to type on the computer a lot. A lot of times when I'm looking down, I don't even think about it and then I, you know, see that I have a puddle right beside my hand. My now 19-year-old son has hyperhidrosis. He started to complain to me probably when he was in about fourth or fifth grade that his hands were sweaty, that he couldn't shake hands or he couldn't um, hold hands with the other kids in a musical because his hands were so sweaty and the other kids were making fun of him. Did you ever see a guy sweat like Ruby? I've never seen anything like that. He, he sweats more than any young person I've ever seen in my life. He's sweating like a pig. He's a meltdown guy. I mean, I'm looking at him, he's pouring sweat. I've never seen anything like it. We need somebody that doesn't have whatever that is that he's got. With DirecTV and AT&T, you can stream your favorite shows without using your data. That makes you more powerful than being stuck in an elevator with a guy with overactive sweat glands. Sorry, I rode my bike today. Oh, cool. Hey. We're back with the very sweaty Emma Stone. Yeah. I'm going to start calling you Emmy, Emma Sweaty Stone. For, if, is that beautiful? Is that okay? It's okay. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. It's right. fine. Okay, good. <laughs> the more you embrace something that is terribly wrong with you, like that, the more you can celebrate. It. The more you can celebrate. It. <laughs> so I distinctly remember being in modern dance class, and everyone in the room was looking at my puddle. I just remember the teacher saying, Sophia, why don't you go get some paper towels from the bathroom and just clean that, you know, wipe that up. I would find new and different ways to um, greet people, so I became a hugger. <laughs> I used to tell people that I don't do handshakes, I do hugs. It's, it's more, more intimate that way. It's now to the point where he will tell me when he golfs, he has to wear two golf gloves, one on each hand, because otherwise the club will slip out of his hands. He played basketball competitively in high school, and from the stands, my husband and I could see him rubbing his hands on his shorts every time the ball was even gonna maybe come to him. Nobody wants to talk about it, but it's a problem that happens not once a week or once a month. It happens every day. Those first few days of being able to hold my baby, I didn't want the baby to slip out of my hands. I didn't want my toddler as we're crossing the street to not want to hold my hand because my hand was wet. My son would want to hold my hand or to give me a hug or you know to just be close to me and I couldn't because I just felt hot or sweaty and I didn't want him to reject me. And that's really, it's sad. And it's scary um, to isolate yourself so that way other people can't hurt you because of something that you can't control. I hate to see him so anxious. I hate to see him, sorry, sad. I have patients who have tried and done everything. They have tried hypnosis, they have tried acupuncture, they have tried to restrict their diets, their fluid intake. They are so desperate to get relief of their disease. I went online and I researched and I found uh, the International Hyperhidrosis Society and I was so happy. <laughs> it was the best day to be able to find a website like that where I could find other people who felt the same way as I did. IHHS is a community of like-minded people looking for solutions and understanding. It's people who understand 
you know, what your loved ones are going through. They can sympathize with you. Um, and they all want the same thing. They want a cure. The Hyperhidrosis Society has really been amazing, uh, knowing that there's other people out there that have the condition uh, and hearing other people's stories, meeting those people. It was, it was such a, a sense of community to walk into to that room and you didn't have to explain, you know, damp hands, clammy hands. You didn't have to explain, you know, layers of clothing. You didn't have to explain why you're embarrassed. It was understood and it was accepted and you could be you. You know, it's a long process, but there is hope. And it's better if you talk about it because you might be able to find someone else that you didn't know that was also embarrassed about talking about it that, you know, can be a great support system. I just want to thank Hyperhidrosis Society um, on everything that they have actually done, all the research that they are doing now, all the money that they actually spend each and every day to try to find a cure for this uh, disease. And I just hope and pray that this uh, one day they'll get enough funding that they could really, really cure the problem. Treatment with the International Hyperhidrosis Foundation has allowed me to be me. These are remarkable patients, and you can remarkably change their lives with good, effective treatment. You should be able to get the help that you deserve for this condition.